don't know me, I'm Sarah. I'm the cleaning project coordinator of the Chautauqua County Rural Ministry. Um, the, with the cleaning project, we're trying to collect as much leftover local produce as possible that would otherwise go to waste from local farmers and just redistribute it. Um, we bring it to local agencies, soup kitchens and pantries, um, including our own agency here. Um, Chautauqua County has the most farms per capita in New York State, is that correct? The most farms? Yes. Okay. So um, we just have a great resource here. So it makes sense that we would want to incorporate our local farmers also into our cooking nutrition program. Um, it seems to be kind of a buzz topic right now. There's a lot of um, local farmer, local food discussions going on. And I'm just especially excited to be able to um, bring some of our local farmers to Dunkirk to meet us because they just have a lot to share and just a lot of expertise and great philosophy about their operations. So. Um, before I introduce our guests, if you haven't been here before, um, let me know if there's not enough surveys back there, and I will go make some more copies. If our copier is still there, I haven't even looked, it's all torn apart. <laughs> um, but there's a survey that in the back that you can fill out, um, which just helps us to improve the program. Um, all the materials back there are things that Gary and Margaret provided. There's some information about their farm, about free range eggs, and also the recipe of the quiche that we're going to eat today. Um, so, also, um, please feel free to take a dozen of their eggs. We're really excited that we, um, with the help of the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation, we got the funding to offer an item of product from all of the farmers in this series to give to every participant, which is awesome. Um, which is it's the highest quality eggs you can get. So, um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Margaret and Gary from Raven Park. Thank you, Cheryl. love to meet people in the community and um, I know already just from some comments we've heard from people we have a lot of we have a lot of questions about things that we're going to talk about a little bit more in a few minutes um, just so that you kind of have an idea of how things are going to roll today uh, we're not going to be rolling eggs no rolling eggs <laughs> the eggs have already been rolled and cracked that's already done um, what we're going to do is Gary's going to help us to do a de he's going to do a demonstration on how to put the quiche together because it's a very easy quiche. I, I'm a terrible cook and even I can throw this together and have it turn out all right. So, so every one of you should be able to take a dozen eggs home and make something similar pretty easily. And then once we're done with the demo, um, we'll put that quiche in the oven along with everything else that's not just what we have to all share today, but there's plenty more, plenty more. Plus, uh, Gary made um, at home this morning fresh, fresh spelt bread from uh, spelt, organic spelt that he ground himself. So everyone, I, I, hopefully he's making a bread and everybody will be able to get a slice of it. slice nice and thin. Yeah. So, um, and then we'll have a we'll have a little bit of time to talk about the farm, to talk a little bit about eggs, the whole organic movement. We are a certified organic farm, of which there's really only about a dozen in Chautauqua County. So it is an, it is a it is a movement that is growing here, and hopefully we'll see a lot more organic farms. But we'll talk a little bit about that, and we'll talk a little bit about. Um, the organic and sustainable food movement versus conventional farming. So he asked me coming in about the, the different colored eggs in the cartons. And um, we have chickens who produce different colored eggs. Basically, and we'll pass this around. It's just a little basket. They come in all different sizes, shapes, and colors. Here's an egg from one of my turkey girls. Big, speckle, heavy. There's a blue egg from one of my Americanas. Different breeds lay different colored eggs. Here's a dark brown egg. This comes from one of my Welsomers. They, they lay uh, a dark brown speckled egg. It almost looks chocolatey colored. And then you can get all kinds of funky little eggs that show up 
Looking like that. This is a, this is what we call a dud. This would not this would not there would not be a viable chicken in this egg. I have a lot of young turkey layers, and this is like one of their little tiny eggs when they first start laying. These are like their practice eggs. And uh, and then you get some funny things. This was an egg that looks like it had been squashed. It sort of flattened on one end, and it's got some wrinkles in it. And, and not every egg that comes out of the hen is perfect. Sometimes they, they are shaped funny. Sometimes they have rough textures on them. Sometimes they've gone crazy eating the oyster shell, and so they have a little too much calcium buildup in their system, and you'll get calcium, um, uh, excess calcium on the eggshells. So, you know, I'll put this, well, I don't know quite where to put this, but maybe later we'll pass it around. Yeah, yeah you can pass it around and look at it and, and see about that. But it is very spe breed specific. Basically, there's two colors of eggs. There's a white egg and a blue egg. All right, so you might wonder, what's a brown egg then? All right, a brown egg is a white egg shell that's got a brown coating on it. The very last thing in the process as the egg comes down through all the oviducts and the different passages before it's being laid, literally the very last thing, it goes through the paint factory. It's just like an automobile coming through the factory line. The very last thing, it gets a shot of pigment on it before it's laid. So brown eggs are simply a white egg with pigment over a cast on it. The blue eggs are, are part of the genetics of the bird itself. When you crack your eggs open, you'll see the brown eggs are white on the inside of the shell. Blue eggs are blue all the way through the shell. It's just a characteristic of the genetics of the bird. Do they taste differently? No, they don't taste differently at all. And there's no difference in the nutritional value. There's an old myth that says blue eggs are lower in cholesterol. But there's no truth to that whatsoever. Okay, Gary's ready to go. I'm going to try and Normally we dice up the garlic a little finer than this. I'm going to just try to cut off the whole something. But start with about a dozen eggs. It's very simple. You stir them up, put them right in the bowl. You've got a, a, a pie pan that is, has been coated in oil. Yeah, they, they did all this for me, which is very nice. Oh, thank you. The kitchen crew here is wonderful. Let me tell you. Um, this is the pan might be a little small for a full dozen eggs, but it's already into it. A recipe, for all intents and purposes, is a guide. You can do all kinds of things that aren't in the recipe and still make things work. I call for a little more milk, and the recipe calls for a little more milk. I'm not going to add it, but if I add it all, it's going to go way over the top of the pan. Put some of that in. Put some cheese in. Grated cheese, you can get this at the market already grated, you can get a block or grate it yourself. Some people like a lot of cheese, some people like a little. I like a lot. Chopped spinach, this is also wonderful stuff. You can put broccoli, you can put almost anything in a quiche. Squash, peppers. Oh, summer squash is great. Onions. Yeah. Spinach is still readily available. There are some local farms that are actually producing spinach already. Uh -huh. uh, you can find them at the Fredonia Farmer's Market. From now on, we'll be out at Church Street yeah. in Fredonia. <laughs> Unfortunately, tomatoes are not in the season. When you use real, fresh, vine ripe tomatoes, there's nothing like them, especially in the kitchen. Just a few. <laughs> you don't mix them together. You put them I, in later. I, I could put them all in a bowl and mix them first, but I'm just going to do it like this. It's fine. Okay. It all gets mixed up in yeah, the pan. Yeah, it all gets mixed up in the pan. And the wonderful thing is, when you're dealing with a small size pan, you don't overflow it. If I put everything in the bowl and so, say, yeah, that looks good, it would be a lot left over. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> So I'm dealing with the size of the container. This is another thing about recipes. Mm -hmm. They're a guide. Put a little, bit, a little salt in. And a little black pepper. Anyone here doesn't like pepper? Because I peppered the rest of it. 